Hello and welcome to Michigan and Other Mayhem, the show about Michigan, murder, mysteries, and other random mayhem from around the world. Your hosts are Allie and Jen. And Jen, what do you have today? I have a story about a pastor who kills a young lady for a sexual fantasy from Isabella County in Michigan, around Mount Pleasant area. Yo. Yeah. Um, I can be the mental palate cleanser because <laughs> I'm going to talk about a man named Bass Reeves. I actually heard a podcast about him on Stuff You Missed in History Class. Then I read two articles and then I saw another like short video came up and I just think the most amazing. There's a fact about him that just blew my mind sideways and mm-hmm. I just think it's it's so dang cool. So I'll, I'll be the palate cleanser. Okay. The mental one. All right. I'll start it off. Okay. Okay, so we... I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. Oh, that's so funny. Come in. What happened? Where's the, What's the beginning? How'd they know each other? He was her pastor? Oh, huh? <laughs> okay, stop. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Prompting you. That's so great. <laughs> okay. October 31st, 2012. John White kills Rebecca at her home in Isabella County. It's a real rural area by Mount Pleasant. Okay. He hides her body in the woods, then goes back to her house. The pastor does? Yep. Dresses her son, three years, so he's about three years old, in his Halloween costume and drives him to his father's house. How did he murder the lady? He strangled her with a zip tie and beat her with a mallet. And how did they know each other? Oh, yeah. So Wait, the, he's her pastor? Correct. She goes to his church. Yeah, and, where so he, he came over to help her get her son ready? No. 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 Oh, <laughs> shit. Okay, sorry. Jump the gun. <laughs> <laughs> he's a pastor at a local church. The congregation was fully aware that John had a colored past. Ooh. Okay, so everyone that What's went colored? to this church. Okay. Yeah, you'll see. Okay. Everybody that went there, All right. everyone that ran the church knew he had a color pass. And what does that mean? That means that he had been released from prison in 2007 after serving 12 years for manslaughter of a 26-year-old woman. Whoa. He had received probation in another case. He was charged with stabbing and choking a 17-year-old girl. <gasps> and in one of the news articles... A person from the church said something along the lines that John was doing good, a lot of good for the community, and Satan did not want him doing good, and Satan got him. Oh my gosh. Being the reason why at around 2 a.m. he went over to Rebecca Gay's house and put a zip tie around her neck, choked her to death, and beat her with a mallet. Did he sexually assault her? So he tells, he admits. Because I'm so messed up because I feel like by saying that Satan got him, Mm -hmm. that he doesn't have to take personal responsibility for the fact that he has attacked and tried to kill previous people and then this time was successful. I thought it was the person from the church trying to make them feel better about. The fact that they accepted him as a pastor. I think it happened because, um, you know, Christians believe that you should be absolved of sin. But, um, which I agree, you don't hold sins against people, but um, watch your back still. Watch your back like, okay, believe that he, you know, believe fresh from the start, but don't let him be around women. Yeah, so okay. He's a woman attacker. Yeah, I know. Okay, I'm sorry. You tell right? Yeah, actually, keep telling me. So, <laughs> John confessed to beating Rebecca with a mallet to the head and strangling her with a zip tie. So he admits all this. He admits also that days prior... He said he was having sexual fantasies about murdering her and having sex with her. After murder? Yeah, after murder. So having sex with her body after she dies. And he tells the police he he did all these things. He remembered strangling her with a zip tie and beating her multiple times with a mallet. He remembers her taking her to the woods. He remembers going back and dressing her son in the Halloween costume, cleaning up, all this stuff he remembers. But when the cops ask him if he sexually assaulted her after her death, he could not remember. 
Oh. So he cannot remember. Do the, so, but since he remembers putting her body in the woods, do the cops know where her body is then? Correct. He he did take them did to they her. Did find that she had been sexually assaulted? It didn't say. Damn. I mean, not that that's cool to know, but now I'm morbidly curious. So, all crazy. This whole situation's crazy. So, we got a pastor with a crazy past. I don't feel it should have been anywhere near children. No, children or um, women, because yeah, or he's women. a woman attacker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just his third one. Yeah. <laughs> and he is sentenced to 56 years in prison. Wow. Six months after being sentenced, John White was found hanging in his cell. He had killed himself, which I think the cheap and easy way yeah. out instead of serving 56 years. Yeah, he was a, he was an old man. Oh. He was 55 at the time and Rebecca Gay was 24 years old. Oh my gosh, when you were telling the story, I just envisioned a young man for no, some reason. No, 55 year old. There's a site you can go to on Michigan that has the convicted people. Okay. Like their record and yeah, stuff? Yeah, their record. So you can see his record and his face is like an old man with big white beard and gray, grayish white beard. That actually reminds me of another serial killer that I'll tell you about at a different time. But that dude looked like Santa Claus and he was a serial killer. Ooh, that's right. crazy. Just so, because they look like Santa doesn't mean they're nice people. Yeah, this guy was very crazy. I thought, that's, all right, 56. I just feel so bad for the woman's son. Who grows up later knowing that his mother was killed while he was home? No one knew if the son had seen it. Had seen the murder happen yeah. or had any knowledge of I'm it? I'm hoping that he slept right through it. Right? Well, I'm hoping he got counseling, too. That's something you're going to need. Even if you slept through it, just knowing that you were at home while your mom was murdered. Yeah. And probably raped afterwards. I always think that when they say, I can't remember, that's code for I don't want to tell you that I did it. I don't remember means I did I know, it and I don't want to tell you. I don't understand what the point was. Of him Hello, not remembering? You're going to jail no matter what. You're going to jail. Right. You confessed. You told them everything. What would be the big deal? And obviously he was going to hang himself anyways. So what did it matter if he just so told the truth? So what did it matter truth? if he just told the truth about it? Yeah, that's weird. And said yes. He did. I think it's crazy. That is crazy. I actually have a story about a man who's way cooler than that, let me say. Okay, we need cool. Way cooler. And like I said, he's had a fabulous life. He has a, okay, are we ready? I'm ready. All right, his name is Bass Reeves, and he was a man that was born into slavery. He was African-American. And he lived from July 1838 to January 1910. And he was like, just, you know, if you had to describe him, he was 6'2", so real tall for back in the day. So tall and lanky, like long arms, long legs. He was... Like um, me. Oh, right. You're like, you are I'm so, so short. Tall. No, that's about my height right there. You're so... Is that... No, that would be you know, when people get drunk, they get taller. Is that your drinking height is 6'2"? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that's your liquid courage height? <laughs> All right. Go on. But for real, this man was 6'2". Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was described as having good manners and a really good sense of humor. As a slave... He was held under George R. Reeves, and that man was a sheriff and a Texas um, legislator. Bass served in the Civil War fighting for the Confederacy, and he ran away between the ages of 23 and 27. And there's a couple stories about, you know, how he ran away. One was that he was playing cards with his master. They got into a fight. George, you know, beat his ass and then had to run off. And another one was that he was fighting in the war for slavery. He sees freed slaves and different stuff. It gives him the idea that he should leave as well. So those are like the two stories about how he upped and left one night. So Bass fled to Indian Territory because it was a lawless area. And that was a place that a lot of freed slaves went to. And he lived with the Cherokee, the Seminole, and the Crete Indians. And he stayed there until the 13th Amendment, Amendment abolished slavery. And he married this woman named Nellie Jenny, which I think is just the Nellie cutest. Jenny. Nellie Jenny. Doesn't like she sound Nellie like... Nellie Jenny. Yeah. Too. Nellie Jenny sounds like... I want like, people to call me Nellie Jenny. You want that to be your new name? Yeah, Nellie Jenny. All right. It sounds just like a wholesome name. Um, she I'm was, a wholesome person. Right? She was from Texas, and they got married, and they had, like, between 10 and 11 kids. That is the thing that just Jesus. kills me. I know. Well, especially back in the day, you know she wasn't at a hospital. <laughs> you mm. know? 
and it is so hard to find information. Some thing, you know, some things said that oh they had ten kids, and others said oh they had eleven. So I don't know. I'm gonna say ten to eleven. They probably have a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. No matter which way, ten, eleven, that's all a lot. And they were um, a family of farmers. That's what they did until Bass was in his thirties, and Isaac Par Parker was appointed to be a federal judge over the Indian Territory, and. Um, Judge Parker appointed James Fagan as a U.S. Marshal, and he directed him to hire 200 deputy U.S. Marshals. So Fagan had heard about Reeves, who was familiar with the territory and spoke several Native American languages. Reeves had also served as a scout and a guide um, for other U.S. Marshals in the Indian Territory, so they knew his skill set. He was considered to be an expert marksman with both a rifle and a pistol. He was so good with the rifle that he was barred from turkey shoots, turkey competitions. And he was known for wearing two Colt pistols butt forward, which is for fast drawing, is how you wear it. Mm -hmm. And he was ambidextrous, so he could shoot with his right or his left hand equally well. So he was a really good marksman. And so they decided to recruit him. And he became the first black U.S. deputy marshal west of the Mississippi. That's cool. Yeah. And this was a very dangerous area for law enforcement. And before Oklahoma became a state, more than 200 marshals had been killed in the line of duty. So this wasn't a job for sissies. This was a job for people like Bass who could shoot and knew the territory and could speak the language. Yeah. So he works the territory until 1983, and he transfers to two other departments, you know, twice before retiring. He worked for 32 years as a federal police officer he retires at age 68. And this is the same year that Oklahoma became a state. And after retiring from the territories, he joined the Muskegee you know, Police Department, and then he served till age 70. So he worked for a very long yeah. time. Yeah, so that's some serious business. He had arrested more than 3,000 felons. He had shot and killed 14 outlaws in self-defense. He was one of Judge Parker's most valued deputies, bringing in some of the most dangerous criminals. He was never wounded, although he did have his hat shot off at one point, which to me, that's close. Yeah, that's close. You know, you'd feel the breeze on that bad boy, mm -hmm. right? And his gun belt was once shot off. That's super close, because you're wearing that. Yeah. Yes. And once someone shot, managed to break the horse's rein that he was holding, but it didn't hit him or the horse. It just broke the rein that he was holding. Which, I was just like, oh. He's lucky. I know, like, that's either, like, God or luck on your side, just, like, deflecting bullets for you at that point. Mm -hmm. And he became a legend in the area, and he became the inspiration for, are you ready? Because this is the point where my brain tipped sideways and just fell the hell out of my ear. What? He's the inspiration for the Lone Ranger. No way. Yes way. And I know in all the TV, um, the TV show, he was a white guy who had a white hat mm -hmm. and sat on a white horse named Trigger and had his Indian friend Tonto, but really he was a black escaped slave who became a deputy marshal. That's cool. Yes. Um, so he was known for his height. He had a reputation for being courageous and successful in the pursuit of criminals. He rode a white stallion. He also had a, a red one too. Apparently he was a little bit of a horse snob because he liked his horses to be like super healthy and really big because... He was a well, big he dude. Was a big guy. He was a big guy, and he was, you know, back in the day, your horse is like your car, and he's like, you know, if you're gonna fight criminals and get all, you know, around this territory, which was huge, you need a good car. Um, he was a sharp dresser, and he was known for politeness and courtesy. He was also known as a master of disguises. The Lone Ranger wore a mask. Yeah. Yeah. He often used aliases. Sometimes he'd pretend to be a cowboy, a farmer, a gunslinger, or an outlaw, just like they are. The Lone Ranger was actually the first TV show to, to be put into reruns. And that's one of the reasons why it's so popular and it stayed throughout the years as it was the first show ever to be a rerun show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but Bass's life wasn't all good. He had his own trials. He has, um, his hardest arrest had to be the time he arrested his own son for murder. His son, that Benny sucks. Reeves. I know. It was his son, Benny Reeves. And he was charged with the murder of his wife. And Bass demanded responsibility for bringing his own son in. The other deputies wouldn't pick up the bounty for his son out of respect. And finally, Bass said, you know, I'll get him. He's my son. If he's guilty, then he'll be taken care of. And Benny did serve time in Leavenworth. 
And he was released after, you know, he served his time. And he did spend the rest of his life living as a good citizen. But he was found guilty of killing his wife. Hmm. Yeah. So Bass himself was charged with the murder of a posse cook. His um, trial was presided over by Judge Parker, if we remember him. Yeah. Yeah, so his good friend. Mm -hmm. And Reeves was represented by former U.S. Attorney W.H.H. Clinton. So, you know, he had good representation. Yeah. He was acquitted. Not a big surprise. Not a big surprise when the judge is one of your friends. So some other cool facts about him is his, about when I say him, I mean Bass Reeves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) His great uncle was Paul L. Brady, who became the first black man appointed as a federal judge in 1972. That's cool. Yeah, so being a judge was in the family or being some type of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Um, Oklahoma has a bridge that was renamed the Bass Reeves Memorial Bridge. He's in the Cowboy Hall of Fame. He's on the Texas Trail of Fame. There's books and TV shows made about his life. And there's even a bronze statue in Arkansas erected in his honor. Wow. Yeah, so I'm like, am I, are we the only ones that didn't know that the Lone Ranger was really an escaped slave and not a white dude with an Indian friend? I don't know. Because they, they have a statue and a bridge so other people know. <laughs> so how yeah. did I not know? But when they said that he was the inspiration for the Lone Ranger... It just tilted my world on its side. I would never have pictured a tall black man yeah. as the Lone Ranger. He did all these things, so he obviously must have never been home. Oh, well, he had 10 to 11 kids, so he was home. <laughs> he was home at some point. Nellie Jenny is a faithful woman. You you got the name Nellie Jenny? You're faithful. You're mm-hmm. a good woman. Hmm. She was, a, you know, just with that name, you can know she's a good mom somehow. That's right. Yeah. So you've been listening to Michigan and Other Mayhem with Allie and Jen. Connect with us at michiganandothermayhem.com to join the conversation, access show notes, find site links, correct us when necessary, and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. Bye-bye now.